Hi everyone, welcome to another weekly MSI Insider live stream. Uh, today we're going to talk about DDR4 memory and we'll talk about memory performance, memory overclocking. We will have a very nice guest from uh, Kingston HyperX here and he will give us all the ins and out about different memory lines and which one to pick for which circumstance. Um, but before we go into that, I want to tell you that we have a very nice giveaway. Uh, go to msi.com slash two slash insider and make sure to sign up. If you like our YouTube page or our Twitch page, you can participate. If you like both, you will have double the chance to win. So make sure to enter. Uh, let me see if we're ready. If you have any questions in between, please drop them in chat. Um, and then we will start right away. And I want to welcome Niels. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for joining our live stream. Yeah. Niels Thank from you for having me. You're very welcome here. Um, with Niels, we're going to talk about uh, about everything about memory modules, and he can tell us a lot about that. Uh, Niels works for Case Hyperx for how long already? Nine years already. Yeah, yeah. It's so been that's a, quite while. a while. Yeah, quite a while. Quite a while. Yeah. Uh, so a short introduction of myself, uh, Niels Burnett, uh, responsible for business development for Kingston in the Netherlands. This is more a sales job. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if I can answer all the technical questions today, but I can always come back to you on, on most things. But uh, let's let's give it a go. Yeah. So we have, I can already see some nice stuff here. So maybe you can tell us a, a little bit about what Kingston does and what kind of different uh, areas you're active in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Kingston is the world's number one independent memory manufacturer in the world. Uh, our core business is memory, so we produce uh, DRAM, uh, SSDs, uh, USB drives, and cards, flash cards, SD, micro SD cards. So basically, all memory products. Uh, today, of course, we're going to talk about DRAM and, in particular, uh, DDR4. What else would you like to know? <laughs> I like everything about the different kinds of DRAM because, of course, everyone knows the, the old green PCB uh, standard DRAM. But that's not what we're going to talk about today, right? No, 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 no. We uh, we're only yeah we're going to talk most about uh, the most sexy products uh, and the products with the highest speeds. I guess uh, our audience likes those products uh, the best. Uh, to go a step back, yeah, Kingston uh, produces uh, different kinds of memory, uh, basically for consumers, for enthusiasts, and uh, uh, for corporates. Uh, meaning we have different kind of memories. Uh, we uh, produce uh, system specific memory, which is more related for OEM systems like HP and Dell. We also have a value RAM memory, uh, which is memory for white box uh, platforms uh, mm -hmm. such as MSI. Uh, and then if you want to go to the more sexy and more higher speeds uh, of memory, then you will uh, uh, end up with our uh, HyperX uh, product family. And the HyperX memory is the memory which is uh, the memory you can also overclock. Yeah. So maybe we can show it a little of it because I have yes. a cam right here, so we can yep. get that a little bit closer. Yeah. So we uh, have the HyperX branding. Because you brought a lot of nice stuff here. Yeah. Let me see if we can properly so see. So these it are a few of our products. We have the HyperX branding, which is the brand name, and then we have uh, in the HyperX family two uh, uh, products: uh, HyperX Fury which you see now displayed, and HyperX uh, Predator. So and the main difference between Kingston and HyperX is that HyperX is more focused at gamers and overclockers. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the memory is open for overclocking, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the target audience is indeed the um, enthusiast, gamers, overclockers, modders, yeah. And I can already see a small difference. All these modules have heat spreaders. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. So normally uh, the build-up of a memory module is that you have a, a, a PCB, a printed mm -hmm. circuit board, and on top the memory chips. Uh, that's like a very naked model. Yes, a naked model. Uh, not sexy at all. Simple look and feel. Uh, however, a HyperX module is more sexy, uh, and it has uh, two reasons. One is we want to make the memory more interesting mm -hmm. for the audience, uh, but also technically uh, it needs a heat spreader to cool down all the components to make sure you can increase your speed and get a higher performance. So basically all the, the HyperX memory is about performance and speed. Okay. Then uh, another module which I have here, which I will show as well. So we can already see a little bit bigger heat spreader here. Exactly. So we have a, a, a better and best approach in the HyperX family. So mm -hmm. you have uh, the, the HyperX Fury and the HyperX Predator. 
and the HyperX Predator module I'm showing right here that will go up to higher speeds. So the Fury range uh, will go up uh, to a certain frequency and uh, the Predator range will go to the most highest uh, frequencies. So what kind of frequencies should we think about when we're going from Fury to Predator, for example? Yeah, um, so um, the, the Fury range starts at 2133 uh, frequency. So that's like the, the basic DDR4 frequency? Correct, right? correct, yeah, yeah. And then it goes, uh, goes up and then the Predator range takes over. It only starts above 300 uh, megahertz and goes all the way up to 4133 megahertz. Okay. So uh, indeed, uh, with a Predator product, y you need a bit more budget, but then mm -hmm. you get a higher speeds and higher capacities. Okay, and there I see also a very nice Predator module, but it looks slightly different than the other one. Yeah, so maybe you can explain Correct. why it does yeah, look yeah. a little bit different. Exactly, uh, the look and feel is almost the same, but... From the front the it looks the same, but the top yeah. is different. The top is different, and that's because we have uh, put LEG uh, lightings in here, so it's an RGB memory module. So it can uh, flash up uh, your computer. So you have um, a nice lighting in uh, in your casing of your computer on the memory board. And of course, in 2019, you cannot live without RGB anymore, right? No, no, no. It's all, uh, it's all <laughs> about everywhere. RGB. Everywhere, monitors, keyboards, everything. Monitors, exactly. And so now also memory. Yeah, yeah. You're you're, you're fully right, uh, Michiel. And that's why uh, we also created a memory module with uh, LED uh, lighting. And I also noticed because here we have a very standard SSD. But you also already have SSDs with RGB in it. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, <laughs> correct. So we also there we have a good, better, best uh, approach with uh, with the uh, SSDs. So mm -hmm. you have uh, an entry level SSD, uh, a mainstream SSD, and a high end SSD. And the high end SSD uh, gives you more performance, and that also falls under our uh, HyperX SSD uh, lineup. Uh, so there we can see the same, also the Predator naming goes uh, on? There. No, 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 there we only have the Fury naming uh, and that's mm -hmm. the Fury uh, RGB uh, SSD uh, and that's the, yeah, our, our most top uh, in performance. Yeah. Okay. And also of course with the RGB lighting on it. And now we're only talking about desktop memory so far, but you yes. brought something else as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. So we also have uh, um, memory for laptops. So this might not look as familiar as the other ones for most people? Correct, correct, because the most people, uh, they tend to build their own system and usually it's a desktop system mm -hmm. as you have more space there. Uh, for uh, desktop systems, uh, we use DIMMs and for uh, laptop systems, we use SO DIMMs. And an SO DIMMs is basically half the size of a regular uh, standard memory module. But that doesn't mean directly that it's half the speed, right? No, 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 of course. No, 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 no. Uh, also, the, the HyperX impact memory uh, goes up to higher speeds. So we do have SO DIMM memory on the value RAM range, but we also have them on the HyperX range, and that's called the, the HyperX impact. People in chat were already asking, what about SO DIMM DDL4? Well, there you have them. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, we have Azodim Valuram, uh, Azodim DDR4, but we also have the gaming memory HyperX Impact Azodim DDR4. And that's the model which I'm showing displaying here right now. So basically for every system, we have a, a, a fit model. Mm -hmm. So it's either uh, DIMMs or Azodims. Yeah. Okay. And with DDR4, um, we also get a little bit differences with DDR3, not only the, the speed of it, that it can achieve, but also in the voltages, right? Yes, correct. Uh, so basically, uh, when memory uh, technology evolves, we go up to better products, basically. So in all ways, we try to create a better product. So we came from the old technologies, mm -hmm. DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. And basically, what every technology does for you it brings a, a better model in all senses. So it will go up to higher speeds, higher capacities, and good news, also a lower voltage. So with DDR4, we are at 1.2 voltage. And a lower voltage automatically means lower power consumption. Yes, so a more green uh, system you will So create. higher speeds and lower power consumption. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and even when we move on, uh, which is still into the future, but with a DDR5 uh, technology, uh, not coming up soon, but when we will get there, probably them will again go to even more higher speeds, higher capacities, and, and probably even lower voltage. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe you can already give like a sneak peek. When can people expect uh, DDR5 memory? Uh, like I think we have most 
gamers and overclockers here. So, yeah. like for for desktop, when yeah. would that be? I, I know that everybody is available? excited. It's still difficult to say. Um, of course, chip manufacturers, memory manufacturers are already maybe touching it or designing it. Uh, but you won't have a, a DDR5 module in the store yet. Uh, that will take a, a while. So not this year, not even in 2020. We expect it in 2021. Yeah. And what kind of step can we expect again in terms of speed? Because uh, now DDR4 can, we'll talk about it later, but with overclocking, you can already get past five gigahertz. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're so hoping. What will DDR5 even bring us? Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could look into the future, <laughs> I would be a, a very rich uh, man. But uh, I, I, I can't say anything about that yet. But you can expect, of course, when we end up with DDR4 on 4133, it must be higher than there. Okay. So as a starting speed. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to. Yes, definitely. I'm, uh, I'm happy uh, uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. And with your memory lineup, we also have like different capacities. Can you maybe tell us something about it and which capacity to take or which combination maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically uh, capacities uh, we have uh, from uh, 4 gig to 128 gig. Mm -hmm. uh, the HyperX Fury range uh, goes to uh, 64 gig, whereas the Predator range, the higher range, will go up to all the way to 128 gig. So that's in different modules, right? It's like a memory kit. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So we have a, a, a single memory module, uh, mm -hmm. which is a four or an eight gig, and we can also deliver kits. So then you get uh, uh, two times the module, and then you could create uh, a total of a higher capacity. So and say two there's times also eight gig is 16 gig. 16 gig. Yeah. And there's also a benefit in taking two times eight over one times 16. Yes. Maybe you can tell a little bit about that. Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, as long as you have space on your platform or on the motherboard, it's mm -hmm. always best uh, to install in, in, in pairs or in kits of two. Um, then you have the optimized balance of your, your system and then you get the most performance out of it. So if you have uh, four slots, then it's best to fill them all with four slots. Uh, for instance, with dual channel memory, you would uh, have uh, two memory and with the quad channel you can have four memory modules. Yeah, so for example here we have an Intel C390 uh, motherboard that supports dual channel but if you get the higher platforms like X299, X399 then you can also have quad channel memory support. Yes exactly yeah yeah and then it's best to use all those four uh, channels because otherwise you lose out so basically you should see it as a highway with four lanes uh, data can pass on four lanes mm -hmm. if you only use two lanes or three lanes then you don't optimize. Uh, you could have had maybe four lanes filled. So you can have more traffic yes, more at traffic, the same time. Yes, more data yeah. going. So then it's always best to, if you have a quad uh, uh, channel system, then uh, go for So really format. use the amount of modules, at least at your, the, the amount of channels that you have. Yes, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. And same also with the capacities. Of course, you could mix capacities for an 8 gig, but it's best not to do that. Then you don't have to optimize uh, system balance. It's best to always install in the same uh, frequency and the same capacity. Does it also matter if you have like exactly the same modules or can you pick and mix as long as they're kind of close uh, to each other? You need to watch out with that. Uh, try to make sure the, 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 the installation is uh, yeah, almost identical. That's always the best for the performance. So at least look for same frequency, same memory timings, same voltage, yes. stuff like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. And um, we already talked a little bit about voltage, but that also it also matters what kind of module you pick and what the speed is with the voltage, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, correct. So, so voltage, yeah, an ideal mo module, memory module would be to have high uh, frequency speeds mm -hmm. and low latencies and low voltage. However, those three not always can be combined, especially when you want to challenge your memory and you want to have the highest speeds. Then, of course, uh, also your latencies will go up and also your voltage will go up, uh, for instance, with overclocking. Yeah. So here we have a couple of modules. So is the voltage for all of these modules the same or can we spot some differences? Maybe? Um, yes, uh, uh, not uh, all the same. So basically for the Fury range, uh, yeah, I will show you the uh, module again. It's 1.2 volt. Mm -hmm. And for the Predator range, which will go up to higher speeds, it's 1.35 volt. So you can get a higher speed, but then of course your voltage also goes yeah. up. So the faster modu modules, they by default need a little bit higher voltage to achieve those speeds. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. And then we have also like, we will talk about it extensively later with uh, different settings in memory, because 
it already has settings loaded into the module nowadays. Yes. Because before, I remember when you wanted to overclock your memory or reach certain speeds, you had to set everything manually in your BIOS. Yeah. So maybe you can explain a little bit about what kind of profiles are they and what do they do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, when you have a standard memory module like our ValueM range, mm -hmm. it's not open for overclocking. Uh, however, with the HyperX uh, family product range, it's open for overclocking. And you have different types or, or means how you can overclock. The most easy one, which fits me the best, uh, because I'm not always uh, an expert, it's maybe for dummies, it's the plug and play module. So you plug uh, the memory module and it automatically overclocks. You also have extreme memory profiles and those modules uh, are more like semi-automatic over, uh, semi overclocking. So you can go into the BIOS and stretch and set those settings yourself to be able to uh, get more performance out of your memory module. Last step could be that you really go further and have like a manual uh, a way of overclocking where you also try to cool your memory, cool your processor. So that's like if you really want the maximum performance, then you will still have to figure out yourself what the best settings are. Yes, exactly. So then you really need to do that manually, uh, find a balance that you don't uh, overheat or, or break or burn memory components, uh, but you try to yeah get the speed up but you really need to know what you're doing then, of course. And that also really depends, even if you have like the same type of memory, it can still make a slight difference in what you can achieve with one module or the other. Can you maybe tell a little bit about that, about the quality of the chips and what the difference in that is? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, of course, it's, it's basically uh, up to multiple things. So uh, very important is the platform that you have that also dictates mm -hmm. what you can achieve eventually with your speeds. Um, Always make sure the right memory module fits the right uh, motherboard or system. Um, uh, and then, yeah, then you can start overclocking. And then, yeah, of course, uh, a, a better chip uh, could maybe reach uh, higher, um, um, higher speeds. However, also that honestly is, is difficult to say. Uh, HyperX always qualifies the memory modules with a minimum standard. So you will always get that minimum standard. Uh, but it's up to you, your system, your BIOS setting to see if you can stretch that. And also the difference in the chips, where does it come from? Because they, they are baked on a wafer? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically uh, uh, Kingston uh, buys uh, wafers, uh, so it's like a, a silicon wafer and usually... That's like full of memory chips? Yeah, full of memory chips. Uh, we slice them and dice them, we test those uh, wafers um, mm -hmm. and then we create a memory module. And if you want to have the ideal memory mo module or the most quality, then uh, you try to get the, the core of the wafer for the chips and the surroundings is less good. So it's more likely if you have chips from the center of the wafer, you will be able to reach higher clock speeds at lower latencies. Um, at least uh, the chance is bigger. Than yeah, that. yeah. Okay. And at least uh, uh, definitely your quality will be better. Yeah, okay. Of the chip. So also if you're buying, for example, a HyperX Predator module, the chance is bigger that you get more of the center of the wafer so you you and uh, that kingston can guarantee that you reach a certain speed with that module yeah 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 so basically kingston uh, is a quality brand so we always make sure we use the most uh, uh yeah, best quality of chips mm -hmm. and therefore we can offer lifetime warranty because we are convinced of the quality of our products um yeah so we only want the best so the gamer gets the best so like yeah. every chip already gets tested within kingston what it can achieve before it's even made into a module? Uh, correct, yeah. So we do the testing ourselves. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, we have different uh, procedures for testing in our factories, if a module fails, we won't uh, uh, sell that chip. Um, we have a, a patented uh, a memory burn-in testing. So we stretch memory chips. Uh, so we simulate uh, the lifetime of a memory module. If it uh, doesn't uh, uh, pass that test, then we won't sell it. If it, uh, so how do you do that, the testing of the lifetime? Because the lifetime can be extremely long and you cannot test it for so long. So what do you do to simulate such an environment? Yeah, so basically you will, would always uh, simulate uh, early lifetime failure. So most products, not only for memory, but if a product fails, then usually it's in the beginning and at the end of the lifetime. So that's all we also know is dead on arrival. Yes, so you, you, yeah, we, we see it as the, the bathtub curb. So you have mm -hmm. a bathtub like uh, uh, at home where you relax and uh, 
then usually it goes down and in the beginning a product can fail and usually at the end of its product's life cycle. And we try to simulate the, uh, especially the, the beginning of the, the product. And if you reach that, then it's very unlikely that a product that it will, fail later. will fail. Yes, and then we, 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 we start producing. Okay, yeah. clear story. Let me take a quick look at chat. I see some people cannot see the link to the giveaway, so I'll also post it in the chat. So you can follow the direct link to sign up for the giveaway. I have a chance to win one of the $20 Steam codes. If you have any questions for Niels, please make sure to drop them in chat while he's still here so we can answer as many as possible. Um, when going back to memory, we have all these different capacities for modules. Yeah. So um, we can already see at the Azodiums you showed, the smaller ones for notebooks, that one has one line of chips and the other has two. Can you maybe explain a little bit about that? Is that also a capacity difference between these two? Uh, yeah, so it's usually to do with capacities. So the higher your capacities, the more chips the yeah, you need to place on a memory module. So then you would have them on both sides uh, or only on one side. So here they're underneath the sticker, but here is one line of, of memory chips and here are two lines. So what kind of uh, capacities can you achieve right now uh, on yeah, one module? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, if I look back to the, the HyperX range, I have a, a few notes here, then um, uh, the, the, the Fury range uh, will go up. Uh, it has capacities of 4, 8, 16, uh, and all the way up to 64 gig, whereas the Predator range can go all the way up to 128 uh, gig. On the HyperX Impact for SO DIMMs, we only go up to 64 gig. Okay, but that's a, a kit, right? Because for memory modules, yes, correct. we're now making the step because we were able to go up to 16 gigabyte like on one module. Yeah. But now we're going to 32. And that's like still very early stage, right? Yes. Yeah. We have a nice picture here. It's an it's an SO DIM. So maybe we can show it. And it's it's in an adapter, so it can also be used in a, a desktop uh, motherboard. Um, but this is 32 gigs. And all our newest motherboards also have a BIOS update that they will support 32 gigs. And this is still only on SODIM, but can we also expect this on like a genuine desktop memory module? Yes, I would, the I would expect so in the future. Uh, it's not on hand yet, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely we will. But you're definitely there. working on it. Yes, if, if platforms like MSI go all the way up that, then we will make sure we will follow with our memory. Okay, that's nice to see. We also have something very nice to show because we actually have what our house overclocker, Top PC. He had one of the Kingston Predator modules the, the HyperX Predator. Yeah. And he overclocked it on our mini ITX board. And let me and show he set you. The, he set the memory record, right? Yeah, <laughs> the world record. The highest frequency ever reached on a DDR4 module. So this combination, it was with uh, one uh, module because one module gives the least load on the uh, memory controller in the CPU. So you can achieve the highest speeds possible. And an ITX, because it only has one uh, memory slot per memory channel. You don't get noise from uh, from any other slots. We'll talk about that later in detail. But that's why ITX boards can give you the highest performance and the highest overclocks. So he combined the HyperX Predator module. This one is not on the market yet, right? Uh, because no, yeah. <laughs> this is like a, a 4266 megahertz model by default. But he overclocked it to 5608 megahertz. So that this, at home, people will not reach this, right? Because this was with liquid nitrogen and stuff. Exactly. You need to be an expert. You need to know what you're doing. Um, you need to have the right system, the right uh, support, uh, the right memory module. Um, and, and yeah, there is a chance you could, could fail or burn up your memory module. So you really need to be an expert in overclocking. And this yeah. is probably also picking the best possible module to achieve this speed. Yeah. So we have one more slide. Here we can see the setup. As you can see, it's it's not a standard setup that people would use in their computer case. So here, the both the CPU and the memory modules are uh, cooled with liquid nitrogen. Um, and on the right, we can see the top 10 in memory frequencies. Um, it's double data rate memory. That's what DDR stands for. So you have to multiply the, the number you see in that list by two, and then you get the effective speed of the memory, which is 5,600. Uh, and eight megahertz at this point. And you can also see in the list from the 10 uh, records that are set there, six of them are on MSI motherboards. And the highest one was together with the Kingston HyperX Predator module. Yeah, 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 and a fantastic uh, uh, result. Yeah, we're really happy with it. 
Well, let me see if I have any more questions for you. Um, how does warranty work with overclocked memory if they happen to break? Um, yeah, best is to, to contact our, uh, our, our main support. Um, yeah, there is a, of course a challenge there that we will look what really happened. Uh, it could be that it won't fall under the warranty. Uh, with our value range, of course, you can't overclock and then we, we have a lifetime warranty. Yeah. Uh, with, with the Hyperx, it's, it's slightly different. We, we check, of course, what, what happened. But, for example, you can void your warranty if you're really making modifications, right? Yes. Like if yeah. you're removing the heat spreader and, for example, like we saw, yeah. put on the or liquid nitrogen plug yes. on it, yeah. then you will void your warranty. So, so it will be with normal yeah. use. With the plug and play, you, you won't have any issues with the warranty. And also with the but when XMP really profiles, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the more you do really yourself or, or, or damage the memory module, yeah, yeah. then, of course, it will be difficult. So if you're really modding the hardware, then you will void your warranty. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clear. Uh, let me see. People are asking about the stock voltage. Yeah, for DDR4, that's 1.2 volts, right? Yeah. And the overclocking modules that uh, are set to higher speeds already, they're at uh, 1.35. Yes, correct. Yeah. And let me see if we have some more. Edward21 is saying you can have a worse uh, chip, it's always a silicon lottery. Yeah, that's a bit like we explained before. You have the wafer, if you have them from the center, the chance is bigger that you get a better module. So you can usually find those on the higher position memory modules. Yeah, yeah. so basically we always set a minimum requirement, yeah. otherwise we don't so uh, always build, what, uh, what's on the box. So you won't get you, lower. Yeah. Uh, what's on the box is really what you get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like HyperX guarantees that you will be able to achieve that speed. Yes, yeah. So that was it for the questions. Niels, thanks yeah, a lot for Michiel. joining the live stream. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank uh, you for having see me. you again here in the future. Yeah. It was nice to talk to you. And uh, then it's time to draw our first winner in the giveaway. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Because we already have some sign-ups for a giveaway here. Uh, let me draw one winner. If you haven't signed up yet, please do so. Go to msi.com slash two slash insider. I will also post the link to the giveaway directly again in chat. So if you cannot see it, please go directly to the giveaway. Oh, we already have a bunch of signups. Let me draw a winner. So the first winner is, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce your name correctly, but Samus Zero. Congratulations, you won a 20 US dollar value Steam wallet code. We'll probably email it to you tomorrow. So uh, congratulations. If you haven't signed up yet, please still do so. We will have more winners today. Um, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. If you cannot see it, the link is also in chat. Um, and then we will continue with our next guest. Ruth, welcome back to the studio. Yeah, my second time. So yeah, second nice time. to be here. For the ones who have seen the uh, Intel Z390 live stream that we had, I think a couple of months ago. Yeah, last year. We already had uh, Ruth as our guest here. And he's our technical expert at MSI. Uh, and he knows all about the technical details about all our uh, different products. So you can also ask a lot more technical questions to it. Also, if you have any questions about CPU, motherboard, but today specifically memory, please drop them in chat and then we'll try to answer as many as possible. And uh, it will also give us some nice demonstrations. We have a nice test set up here. Yeah, true. So maybe you can already tell a little bit about what's on there. Uh, we have a Z390 uh, ACE motherboard and also a 9900K. <coughs> it's really high end uh, and a RTX 2080. It's a Ventus card uh, with HyperX uh, memory uh, going up to DDR4 uh, 3333. And <coughs> so this is the HyperX Predator line that we talked about before. Yep. So that's like the, the higher position memory line. Now we can do some uh, small overclocking with it. I'm not an overclock expert, so I'm not going to reach uh, any speeds like uh, Top PC, our in-house overclocker. But uh, so uh, today <laughs> we'll more focus on what you what can, you do, you at can do at home exactly. to achieve yeah. better performance. Yeah, um, and some tips and tricks what you yeah. can do if it doesn't work or you uh, uh, you run into problems maybe later in the, yeah. when the system is already older. You can have. have uh, so we won't be doing hardware modifications. So nope. not voiding any <laughs> warranty. No, no LN2. <laughs> no, no, we won't do that. No. 
So let me see if we already have some questions here. Of memory. Axel is saying you did not answer my question. What was Axel's question? Axel, please drop your question again in chat. I will look it up and I will try to get back to you next stream. So I can still ask it to Niels if it was a specific question for uh, HyperX. Um, let's first talk a little bit about the changes that we made with our motherboards. Because with, we had a very nice line of Z370 boards. Mm -hmm. But we made quite a big jump, big jump up in uh, memory speeds on Z390. And that's due to a change we made in the motherboard design. Mm -hmm. So we have a very nice slide here in which we can maybe explain the basics about what we changed in our design. Um, we see two memory design layouts. Right. They maybe explain what like a layout is. Uh, a layout is how the, uh, the wires inside the PCB, as you will, uh, are uh, laid out in the, uh, in the, yeah, the substrate. Mm -hmm. the, uh, it's a resin uh, and there are all, all kinds of copper wires are integrated into it or printed in it. That's why it's called printed circuit board. And all those lines, especially with the memory modules, uh, you have at least 64 data lines and then also a lot of uh, address lines uh, going to it. So a lot of little wires in the PCB are connected to the uh, DIMM slots. And with most uh, motherboards, you have two, uh, two DIMMs per channel. So you also need to connect both of those DIMMs uh, to the same channel, to the same wires that go to the CPU. So we already, on our previous uh, lines, we had DDR4 Boost. And there we could already achieve higher memory speeds because we optimized the uh, the traces going to the memory modules. Can you maybe explain what what is DDR4 Boost and what does it do exactly? Yeah, the DDR4 Boost is actually the name for how we optimize the, the printed circuit board. And uh, what's really critical with uh, uh, the memory speeds is that <coughs> uh, the lines need to be uh, the same length to the, the memory controller inside the CPU. So uh, and the outside lines, uh, they travel a longer way than the inside lines. So the middle lines, they will just make like a small wiggle and uh, artificially create a longer length. So they will match the, the outside line. So it's very, uh, uh, yeah, you can fine tune that part. And the better you do that, the better support of uh, high clock memories. And we also have like a difference in the PCB, right? Because with DDR4 Boost, it's, you don't get as much noise from other components because of the optimized PCB. Uh, yeah, also, uh, depending on how uh, sharp you make angles, mm -hmm. uh, uh, then also more noise is created by, uh, 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 yeah, like the wires, if you bend them in a, in, a, uh, in a straight angle, then it will yeah, create more noise than if it's a fluent, um, uh, yeah. So it's all about reducing the noise and shortening yeah, the traces and make sure they're the same length. Same length, yeah, that's uh, the key and uh, not, not too sharp uh, angles. Yeah. Okay, Be mm -hmm. with DDR4, Boost, we already had it on our previous board design, mm -hmm. and those were T topology boards. Yeah, like in the slide uh, is trying to, to make. Yeah, so we have like a, a very simple drawing. It doesn't look like this in real, but it's just no, two. No, it's only two lines, and yeah. th there's, there's a lot of lines going to the memory yeah, modules, of course. Way more, but this is just like a, a basic drawing of what the difference between daisy chain and T topology is. And daisy chain is what we use on our current Z390 boards. Yeah. And uh, can you maybe tell a little bit about what the difference between daisy chain and T-topology is? Yeah, basically, uh, I don't know if I can use this cursor. Uh, yeah. This part of the T-topology means the, the, the A, A1 and A2 uh, DIMM slots, uh, they have the same length to the CPU. So, so each line is uh, one memory channel, right, in this case? Because uh, C390 yeah. and C370, they have two memory channels. That's different for X299 and X399 because they have four. They have four, yeah. And that will also give you uh, the quad channel yeah. support. So, so uh, DIMMs A are on one channel and mm -hmm. DIMMs B are also on one channel. So let's take uh, channel A, for example. And you can see that uh, the line to the CPU, to the memory controller and the CPU, uh, they have like a, a, like a T shape or you can, yeah. uh, if you stretch it out, you can show yeah. it as a T shape. And that's where the name comes from. Uh, this is very good if you want to fill both uh, uh, DIMM slots mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then it will uh, uh, be optimized for, for two modules uh, per channel. So the thing with T-topology is you will get the same performance without having to worry which slot you're actually using. Yeah, more or less, yeah. 
-hmm. And with Daisy Chain, that's different. With Daisy Chain, is different. Uh, this is, uh, uh, for example, A2 will uh, travel to the, the connection point of A1 and then to the CPU. So uh, the distance from A2 to the CPU is a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, uh, uh, in fact, that's not a problem because uh, if there's nothing in A1, it will not generate any noise. Yep. And if you put it in A2, then it's terminated by the DIMM itself. So that's a more of an electrical uh, thing. If you terminate the ends, it means it doesn't generate any noise or uh, echoes in the signal. So if you're using two modules, if you do that in T-topology, you can still suffer a little bit from yep. noise from pretty much the existence of the second memory slot on, on the same channel. Yeah, basically the, the, the wire that's not, uh, where, for example, if you use A1, uh, and not A2 or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Uh, one end is always open and it acts more or less like an antenna. So it will pick up noise from the surroundings. And that's what, what is uh, uh, less good for, for a single uh, module per channel. Okay. So basically the difference between uh, daisy chain and T-topology is that uh, daisy chain will work better with one module per channel. So two and modules in total on Z390? Exactly, yeah. And uh, T-topology will works better with uh, two modules per channel. So, so why four in Z370. So why did we switch from T-topology to daisy chain? Yeah, basically, mem uh, if pet, uh, people want to overclock memory, they usually use one module per channel because the, the because uh, that will give you the best performance. It will give you definitely the best performance and you will achieve higher overclocks. So even if the uh, T-topology is better uh, for uh, overclocking uh, two modules per channel, it will never reach the speed as one DIMM in uh, daisy chain. Okay, so because most people use two modules, you want to have the best possible performance with two yeah. modules. Exactly. And that will also give you the highest frequencies with overclocking, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we have some boards here. Maybe we can also show a little bit about the different layouts on motherboards. Here I have a nice small ITX board. and I will show it in detail again. This one has two slots. So here there is no daisy chain or T-topology whatsoever no. because there is a direct line from each uh, memory channel from CPU to each DIMM. So there is uh, channel one goes to the first memory slot, memory channel two goes to the second slot. So yeah, this is ideal this is for like, overclocking yeah. basically. Yeah. So this is the most ideal layout. Yeah, if you want to do memory overclocking, this is the, yeah. But the, here you can only place two modules. So if you buy a board and later on you want to upgrade the amount of memory, that's not possible here. No, you have to replace them. So we have another board where we have that possibility because it has four memory slots. It's a bigger board. It's a micro ATX. Uh, in this case, it is the... Uh, B360. Yeah, B360 basically. Bazooka. Um, but like in the basics are all the same for all boards, right? Yeah, uh, for Intel boards and AMD boards are yeah. pretty much the same. So here we have four slots and we can already see there are on the PCB, you can see that it shows which uh, memory slots to fill up first. Yeah, exactly. So why is that? Why uh, can't you just pick which uh, one you like best? It, it still works. It, it, it doesn't mean uh, that you cannot use it like you, you want. Uh, for example, if you have any uh, size uh, restrictions, Sometimes there's a, uh, you have very large CPU coolers and they block your first DIMM. Uh, then you need to do something. Uh, well, in this case, it's not a problem because the, uh, the, the module you want to use first is the second slot and the fourth slot. Uh, but basically, that's the, what is explained in the diagram. I don't know if we can put this one up again. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, because you need to put the memory module at the farthest, uh, yeah, the furthest end of the, the, the memory line. So not in A1, but in A2. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically also what's printed on the board. Uh, instead of uh, everybody having to remember this, uh, we put it, of course, also in a manual, but what's easier, uh, just to print it on the uh, on the board itself. So don't even when you're building it, you, don't... you just say, oh, which one first? Oh, it just say so in, on the PCB. So this always is like the, the second and the fourth slot that you have to fill first. Uh, usually, yes, there's always, uh, 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 exceptions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've seen uh, also boards with uh, the four channels. Uh, sometimes they are uh, reversed or on one side it's yes, two and four and on the other side it's one and three. 
because now we're talking they'll about lay out differently. Yeah. So we're talking about two sides now. We don't have that here, but no, we no, have no. another motherboard. Yeah. Well, we do have that. That's a good. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, the example. It's a bit bigger and a little yeah. bit heavier. There we go. Because this is an X299. Uh, it's the Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, and here we see eight memory slots. Yeah. So this is also a quad channel board. Yeah. So four from channels. the yeah. from the CPU, you will get four channels, and each channel has two DIMM slots. Two DIMM slots. Yeah. So we can see two of the prints on the PCB here. Let me see if I can get that properly shown. So here we have one. So there you can see which one to fill first. Yeah. And in this case, there is the other one. Yeah. So you have to use the two outer ones in this uh, case, but that's case, not yeah, always yeah. the case, right? No, that's why we printed on the motherboard. So. Uh, when you're building it, you can mm -hmm. immediately see, okay, which one do I need to, to fill if I'm, I'm just adding four modules to this board. Let's see if it's, yeah, yeah, so it's better visible. Yeah. You can also see that they have uh, different uh, uh, letters. So DIM A, B, C, and D means that there are uh, four channels. So channel so A, channel B, one channel, channel, channel C, yeah. channel D. Yeah, exactly. Okay, clear. So here we have, I will also show it on our board right here. So this is the Z390 Ace motherboard. And maybe you can show where they can read it, dude. Uh, let me see if my finger is close enough. Yeah. There should be first. So there it's also the one, yeah. the outer ones, they yeah. will give you the best memory performance. Yeah. So for most people, especially the ones that are using two modules, make sure to fill up the outer one first, first, and that will give you the best memory performance. Yeah, I'll just say look at the print because it's on all yeah. MSI models. Yeah, that's so in, in, with this board. If they're now yeah. outside or inside, just look at them on the board. Then uh, it's easy. You don't need to open a manual at all. It's just there. So, yeah, look for that. Uh, so we talked about that C three hundred and seventy is T topology and Z three hundred and ninety is daisy chain. Mm -hmm. But we also have a nice graph and what that does in your frequencies. So we on top with the uh, four thousand eight hundred megahertz plus, we see our Z390 ITX board that we uh, set the world record with, with uh, HyperX. Um, and that's because there is just one dim or one uh, memory slot per channel. Yeah. So if you really, only thing you care about is highest memory speeds, get an ITX board. Yeah, or two memory slots. Yeah. yeah. But um, now if you're having daisy chain, you can get quite, quite close to it with an ATX port with four slots. Yeah. So we can see the C390 Godlike and the C390 Ace that we're using here. You can get quite close to it. So you, you uh, on the bottom, you see Z370 boards and they're quite a bit behind and that's just because of the T topology. Yeah. So um, let me see what we have further on. Oh, this is already about uh, the, the benchmarks in game. So we will talk about that later. Um, so how does this is there more things that matter in this or is it just the of course you need, topology and daisy chain you need to have the memories that can do this kind of speeds that those are so it's not guaranteed rare. that if no. you have this motherboard that you can reach that yeah. speed and if you want to go up to 4.8 gigahertz then yeah then you, you, need, you need to play the tricks and yeah. also ln2 and you need to overclock the, or actually underclock the cpu and you do single channel only yeah, so you, you try to maximize yeah. the, the the clocks uh, to get like a uh, like a record or so also the, the record that we set with the HyperX Predator on the ITX board that's one module on one channel yeah with CPU in very slow performance but uh, so yeah. that is just to take off the load of the CPU yeah so yeah. it has all the power for the memory for one controller. memory controller channel yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. so now we talked a lot about different kinds of motherboard layouts and what's best for two modules and what's best for four modules. Mm -hmm. But we also have some nice demonstrations and some tests in which we uh, try to see what the difference is if you're having a higher clock speed or if you're using single channel versus dual channel. Because single channel is very nice to get extreme overclocks and extreme frequencies, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily give you the best performance. Uh, it doesn't, no. If you use uh, only one DIMM, eh, for example, if you have to choose between two, two times eight gigabytes and uh, one times 16, then I'll, I would go for two times eight gigabytes and I will show you in a minute uh, why that is. Uh, also, uh, 
if you put the, the memory modules accidentally wrong in our motherboards, it will mm -hmm. also give you a notification on the uh, on the BIOS screen when it boots that it, uh, that it gives you a warning that is not optimized for, for performance at all. So okay. uh, we can show that too. Okay, so we ran some tests with different games. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also different kind of software where you can benefit from yeah. uh, from higher bandwidth or higher frequency or even both. That really differs, differs yeah. per situation. So we have a nice slide here with some uh, benchmarks in GTA 5. And maybe you can explain a little bit what we see and where the differences come from. Yeah, the, the SC, that means single channel, and the DC means dual channel. So, so single channel yeah. is when you're using one dim and not optimizing from... Yeah, not if you put it... Well, in this case, I've tested it with two dims in the, in the same channel. Okay, so, so you still have the same yeah. amount of memory. So I'm ignoring the, the first print on the PCB and mm -hmm. I'm just putting them in the first two days. So this is what you would get if you position wrong, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So you're only, so what? you have the same capacity, yeah. the same clock speed, but yeah. because you're only utilizing one memory channel, yeah, that will simply cost you performance. That will cost you performance, yeah, especially uh, the orange bars are the, the Ryzen uh, CPU and uh, the, the, the blue bars are uh, the 9900K, which is uh, tested in this uh, particular motherboard. Uh, so from going from single uh, channel to dual channel memory, we'll uh, have like a 10% increase in uh, frame, uh, frames per second in uh, GTA 5 with a, a, a pretty low uh, setting. So one, uh, uh, 1080p and only high settings, so not very high uh, high settings at all. So this is tested with this setup. So it's with this setup, the Ace yeah. motherboard with the uh, 9900K, that's the blue bars. Yeah. And this is the uh, RTX 2080 graphics card. Uh, yeah. In the this 20X, situation. 2080, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you will get, only by picking the right uh, slots to put your memory modules in, yeah. you will gain, what is it? Around 10%. 16 to 17 FPS. Yeah. Okay, that's an easy win. <laughs> that's an easy win, yeah. And you won't, yeah. You, you, if you want to do this, you you need to overclock your graphic card to match it again. So yeah, yeah. So that, that or uh, overclock your CPU in this case would also help. If you look at the the speed from twenty six sixty six, I've put this uh, speed in because that is what uh, the speed you will get if you use like for example a B three sixty motherboard or uh, an A three ten. So that's like the default speed you will get with yeah. the Coffee Lake. CPUs and the yeah. Coffee Lake refresh that we have here. Yeah. So only if you have a Z motherboard, you can overclock uh, the memories with XMP or uh, manually uh, over the, the Intel spec. So if you have uh, a B or an H motherboard, uh, you won't be able to go over 2666. So they, they stick to the Intel spec, which yep. is 2666. Yeah, it's locked right? by Intel and yep. uh, we cannot go around it. So yeah, that's okay. why the Z boards are also popular for, for memory overclocking. So it's not only CPU overclocking, also yep. memory overclocking. Uh, Intel that's sees that the same way because the memory controller is inside the CPU and uh, uh, you need a Z board to overclock. That's their uh, policy on so that. So that's different with AMD, right? Because yeah, AMD is different. Yeah. You have, of course, their high-end chipset for, for Ryzen 2 is the X470 chipset. Yeah. But you also have B450. Yeah, it's not locked uh, at all. So you can so overclock the same the like memory. a CPU. Yeah. You can also overclock. Yeah. Uh, Ryzen CPU on a B450 motherboard. Yeah. And same goes for memory. Exactly. Yeah. And there we can also see quite a jump. Uh, for AMD, you also see a big jump. Uh, you, um, you see a big jump, of course, from single channel to uh, dual channel. So memory. that's also just the positioning of the modules. That yeah. Or, mm -hmm. uh, yeah also or choosing two instead of one. So yeah. two times eight or, uh, or one times 16. Uh, so also when buying jump. a memory yeah. kit, really make sure if you have dual channel support on your motherboard, which is pretty much any more board nowadays supports yeah. dual channel and a higher end even quad channel, make sure to get at least that amount of modules that will give you the best performance. Yeah. So with the X299 we had before, uh, you will get better performance if you have four modules than when you have two modules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go up in, uh, in speed, so the uh, 3466 or the 3600, uh, so this is outside of spec, that's yeah, where we yeah. really start overclocking. Yeah, then uh, even the CPU memory controller is out of spec, but uh, you, you can reach this kind of speeds uh, with most modules that are uh, uh, that are uh, geared to, towards overclocking, like the, the HyperX Predators. And uh, you see still a small jump, <coughs> but it, it tops off, so it means yeah. it's not uh, giving you a lot of extra performance anymore. But the biggest uh, win is the single channel to dual channel memory. 
and of course this is a bigger jump than this this is only like one speed grade up mm -hmm. and this is uh, uh, like three uh, speed grade up but you still see that it goes slightly up the frame rate yeah still yeah it still has some uh, room left and it looks like uh, there's more to gain for the amd going from 2666 to uh, 3466 so officially also for amd the the the, the highest spec for them is uh, uh, 2933 mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so 3466 would also mean overclocking for for them so yeah but that kind of speeds are, are yeah achievable with, with yeah reasonably priced uh, memory modules luckily the prices have come down a lot so because now it's even like memory around three gigahertz that's pretty much the sweet spot in price as well yeah yeah it's not uh, uh, more expensive than 2666 or even the 24s or so there is what, no point in buying yeah. a slower kit no not, not anymore. so even if for example you have an intel h series board or a b series board in which you will always only be able to get uh, 2666 yeah you can still buy the 3000 if they're cheaper yeah it won't hurt your performance no you will uh, not be able to run them at their uh, maximum spec no it will just down clock to 2666 yeah but that's no problem whatsoever right no problem no. so if it's cheaper just go for that yeah yeah and then we have another game because this is gta yeah but we can see pretty much the same thing with shadow of the tomb raider yeah both of them are, are pretty much uh, cpu uh, uh yeah, high cpu load games as well so we just run the the, the built-in benchmark but mm -hmm. it, it still puts a lot of stress on the cpu and um, that's also why you see uh, quite a big difference between the amd amd and the intel mm -hmm. if, uh, in games where AMD and Intel are closer, then probably the GPU is the bottleneck and not the, the CPU is not that important. So you won't get the same kind of uh, jump with the memory speed as well. So if it's CPU bottlenecked, then yes, you can also uh, achieve more FPS with uh, faster memory. So we have some benchmarks with different graphics cards. And there you can yeah. also see that if you have a slower graphics card, which for example, we have let me see right here this is a 1060 yeah with a high-end uh, cpu there it's yeah it's a bit of out of balance uh, yeah so then you see the, the a... gpu becomes the bottleneck and the differences yeah. are quite small especially yeah. if you go towards higher settings yeah the difference there even the the, the single channel memory is, is is yeah there's a small gap but it's it's yeah i would say not uh, negligible so that the the higher the spec uh, the closer it will get that's always the case but with, with the uh, where the the, C, the gpu is the bottleneck it will uh, not show much difference but this is different if you put in high in gpu yeah so now we're using an rtx 2080 yeah which you can see in this graph yeah. so this is uh, like the other test is far cry 5 um yeah and here we went all the way from 1080p high to 1080p ultra 4040p ultra yeah all the way up to ultra hd which is 2160p at ultra settings yeah and there we can see it's, it's one line yeah so there is no performance difference anymore and this situation then the gpu is definitely the bottleneck and it, it won't help you much uh, to to increase speed on the cpu or the memory so even single channel memory it doesn't really make a difference anymore in nope. this specific situation no it, it so there is really it, gpu you, you is can only throw uh, a or faster the, gpu yeah. uh, at it and then it will go faster but a, a faster cpu or faster memory won't help you so if people play on an ultra high definition screen and they put everything on ultra if they really like the eye candy yeah they will not benefit as much as for example people no. who play esports games and they tend to use lower resolutions yeah. lower settings um just to get that high frame rate yeah uh, for example like on a 230 hertz monitor and they really want to get that high frame rate at lower settings they will benefit a lot from this yeah of course they they will benefit from cpu overclocking and from memory speed definitely so that's that's also a bit linked to each other so yeah the cpu yeah. will automatically perform a little bit better yeah. with the faster memory exactly so we also have some averages with five games yeah so maybe you can tell a little bit about which games that we test and what yeah. we can see in the averages uh we used uh, gta 5 and uh all all games were uh, used on high settings uh or when there's a preset we we call that high or with gta we just set all the set, most settings at high mm -hmm. and uh we use like a standardized uh set of, of settings um uh, one is uh, gta 5 uh, the other one is uh, assassin's creed uh, origins and yeah. the other one is far cry 5 and 
another Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and the last one is uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay. So here we see the average between all those games. Yeah. With a few different settings and a few different yeah. processors. We, we, we tried to highlight here what's the difference between memory speed. So uh, uh, we uh, assume that you, you use two modules and you put them in the right uh, dim slots. And so here, they both are dual channel, yeah. but here we can really see the difference between lower clock memory, like for example, the 2666, yeah. which for Intel is the default DDR4 speed. Yeah. So if you just put in your modules and you don't change anything, so you don't yeah. enable your XMP profile, this is the performance you will get. Yeah, that's uh, that's the difference you will uh, see. Yeah. Even you see with the, the uh, lower CPU, the, the mm -hmm. i5, you will see more gain than with a high CPU, which is already very fast. So yeah. it's unlikely that the 9900K is, is definitely a bottleneck, but so that again still is gain because something. Yeah. The core i5 becomes uh, a bottleneck earlier than a 9900K. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, the AMD is pretty close. Uh, it's uh, close to the 9900K, but still have some, yeah, some gap. So that's also quite an increase. So if you have an i5 processor, um, if it's a K model, it already makes sense to buy a Z motherboard because you can overclock it. Yeah. And it also benefits a lot from the higher frequency memory. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's 10% up if, if you have faster memory. So yeah, even if you have way, the same yeah. memory and you overclock it, you will get, gain 10%. Yeah. And especially with this. the current memory prices for the higher frequency memory, yeah. they're not very expensive anymore. Like no. over three gigahertz, they're almost the same price as the lower frequency yeah. ones. Exactly. So um, we also have some nice demonstrations to, to show this and also some benchmarks for, uh, where we can see some differences. But first, let me take a look at the chat. Yeah. Um, someone's asking, what about Battlefield 5? Battlefield 5, um, not sure. Uh, I think for, for multiplayer game, uh, I've heard it's quite a, kind of CPU heavy. Uh, so that will definitely that benefit. That will mean that it will benefit. But yeah. uh, Battlefield 5 is a bit hard to benchmark and make it consistent. So uh, it takes a lot more time to get a consistent uh, uh, result out of that. Especially if you have a multiplayer game, it's never the same. So yeah. very hard to average that. And also it will probably depend on the resolution as well. If you're playing at Ultra of HD, course, yeah, you yeah, will yeah, not benefit yeah. as much no. than when you're playing Full HD at lower settings. Yeah. So like the, the slide with the Far Cry 5, uh, the, the, when you go up to 1440p, then the, the differences will become smaller and smaller. And if you yeah. go to Ultra HD, then it's So it's the higher gone. the resolution yeah. and the higher the, the same settings, settings yeah. mm -hmm. the uh, less the difference becomes with faster memory. Yeah, yeah, because the bottleneck will shift to your GPU and not your uh, CPU or memory. We also have a question from Edward21 says, I also played with command rate 2T versus 1T. 1T was not 100% stable since sometimes system booted up without monitor signal. Not sure if bumping DDR voltage will help here. Uh, actually, that, that, that there's two parts in this and, and both are very good advice. Uh, 1T is, is basically the, the, the fastest way of uh, how the, uh, uh, the module operates. Um, don't know the specifics about it, uh, how that works exactly, but uh, it, Usually when you're troubleshooting and you try to achieve higher frequencies, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing you do is go from 1T to 2T. Uh, okay, if that doesn't help, th the next step is basically what he says as well. Uh, uh, bumping bumping up, up the voltage. The voltage, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you do. But that and doesn't always help, right? No, it doesn't always help. And the third step is to, to, uh, to slow down the timing. So basically higher timings will slow down the module and uh, give you a, a, b a better chance of reaching that clock speed but it could still cost you a little bit of performance. Of course, because yeah. the higher the timings, yeah, the if you more add delays, performance you usually get. Yeah, yeah. It will get slower, but you can still say uh, I've achieved like maybe 4,000 gigahertz, yeah. right? Uh, even if your timings are kind of slow. Let me see what we more have. Some people who are running three gigahertz at 13, 13, 13, 33, at one T. That's pretty fast. And those are also very decent timings. Yeah, the timings are very fast, yeah. yeah. Normally you see a 16, 15, okay, but yeah, anything under 15 is quite fast, yeah. So if you have more questions, just drop them in chat and we'll continue to show some stuff yeah. on the system. Because we don't have it running for nothing. But first, I want to remind you that we're running a giveaway. 
Um, go to msi.com slash tour slash insider. If you haven't signed up yet, please do so. And let me also pick another winner here. Uh, if you cannot see the link on the landing page, uh, I will also drop it in chat. Uh, well, Ruth can start building up the. Can I close this off? Yeah, you can close okay. that up. So you can prepare for some demonstrations. So our next winner of a uh, 20 US dollar Steam wallet code is Red Dead R. Congratulations. Uh, we will send the code to you probably tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, please do so. We will still have more winners. Uh, Ruth is already yeah. making some changes. So you're making a mistake on purpose here. Uh, yeah, I put uh, <laughs> two modules in one channel. So the other channel is not doing anything. And so if uh, we, we can now see it from the top. So here we have two empty slots. Yeah. And now we're only using primary memory channel. So memory channel, channel A. a. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there should be a, a, a warning message on the, the buy screen when it's booting. Uh, so this is 16 gigabytes um, of single channel, channel memory. That's single channel. So this, yeah. this will perform the same as when you would take one memory module of 16 and yeah. put it on, def uh, yeah. on default speeds, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's see if we can boot. Can we get the capture? And then we should have a warning screen. Hopefully it's booting. Now we should get an image. This is always complicated yeah. because we're now always trying awkward. to <laughs> get the BIOS to the capture card. Exactly, yeah. The capture and that can card. be a complicated thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's booting. Yeah, it should be. We have to see on which monitor maybe something shows up there. No, no, that usually it's coming. Oh, it's already going to. It didn't display the, 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 the bias. Uh, maybe the capture card was too slow to respond to the bias. Yeah, it could be. Maybe if we bash the lead <laughs> when we try to reboot it. No, we we'll just try to reboot and see if we, if we can get, catch it a second time. At least uh, the capture card should be awake now. We're already getting some questions about 1080p versus 1440p, which will be next week's live stream. And then we will uh, talk about that in detail. Yeah, there we have it. Uh, it's hard to read from this distance, but basically what it says, it's advising you to use A2 and B2 uh, on the thing. Um, normally it will wait there, uh, but now it just, uh, after a timeout, it will continue so it will give you the error message yeah and it means move one of your memory modules to another yeah, slot we advise to get the best you performance. to move yeah. the memory modules and uh, you can also uh, click in the uh, in the in the window that you will want to ignore this uh, this message so it won't turn up anymore so if you did it on purpose and you want to keep it that way uh, maybe you've uh, accidentally broke off uh, one of the slots then you can still use your motherboard well, let's set uh, the memory timings to the... <laughs> Phil Mitchell is saying, my brain is now overcooked, I can't take much more. <laughs> okay. We'll try to keep it as basic as possible to make everything understandable. And we will show you some differences. So now press OK. So now we're going into there practice go. instead yeah. of just theory. Oh, it's already set up for 2666. So uh, that's basically... Um, what most people do when they enter the bias, they only need to do, or we, we can show you, just uh, go back to default. So this is how you get it. Uh, and usually you just click on uh, uh, XMP profile one or two. Uh, in this case, uh, this HyperX uh, Predator module has uh, lower latencies on XMP profile two with a uh, speed mm -hmm. of 3000 <coughs> and with uh, XMP one, it has the 3333 33, uh, megahertz, uh, so higher clock, but a little bit relaxed timing. So, uh, so that's very C common, right, in 16. XMP profiles? Yeah, sometimes the, the XMP2 is the fastest one with the highest clocks, and uh, one is the more relaxed one. In this case, they've chosen uh, one with higher clocks and one with uh, better timings. So that either that way... And differs from situation to situation? Per module. What's the best? Yeah, okay. per module, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes there's only one uh, XMP profile, so you, you just select the one there is. Yeah. 
And if you do that, just save and exit. That's a, uh, that's a very common thing to do. That's also mm -hmm. what I do when I do the testing and I'm not overclocking. Uh, basically, what I want to force now, because this module uh, with XMP will uh, default to uh, uh, 33, 33. Uh, we will fix it at 2666 to simulate, okay, this is about the speed you will get with the, uh, the, the, Z, the B or H uh, chipset. And that's all there is to it, just save and exit and go. So basically we try to recreate the, the graphs we've seen earlier, uh, mm -hmm. just the charts. Um, I also want to show you that some applications are also benefiting from uh, memory speeds. So we do, hey, it's not exiting, is it? Oh, the capture card is delaying. We've seen that happen before. Uh, once the Windows pops up, then the capture card should also... Yeah, the capture card in the combination with the BIOS, that's, a, that's complicated. That's always <laughs> something new. Yeah. I think we should already be in the Windows or almost close to Windows. Yeah, there, yeah, there we have it. I can see by the postcode it's changing to temperature. When so the capture saying. card is not capturing the part in between, but no, it is booting. It has problems problem. switching between yeah. the resolutions, I think. Okay, <coughs> so basically, uh, I think most people have seen, seen a bench, so it's a measure for CPU performance. And uh, we just run it on this one just to show you what kind of speed you will get. It has a small bump in, in, in performance uh, when you go from single channel to dual channel, but any dual channel is basically already good because you will just mm -hmm. get like a very small percentage extra, like 0.5%. Okay. Uh, so it won't give you 10%. Uh, that's not like we impossible. saw in the games before. No, no, okay. not, not, not that much. So we'll make a print screen uh, just to remember. Or do you want to write it down? It's also fine. Let me make a note on my phone because uh, okay, okay. I think that's the easiest way. So what did we have here? Uh, this is single channel 2666 and Cinebench 1971. Single channel 2666 and the score was 1971. Okay, got it? Got it, okay. Uh, no, don't save. Uh, also, uh, this is a quite good uh, uh, kind of situation where you see a benefit from memory speed. Uh, this is 7-zip, it has a built-in mm -hmm. uh, benchmark tool and it will just give you a number in uh, MIPS, uh, mega instructions per second I would guess. Uh, but basically it's a measure of speed of how, how fast it can compress and decompress uh, uh, zip files basically or 7-zip files or RAR files or whatever. So this is really CPU intensive Yeah, exactly. Task. So you can write down. So the GPU is even on idle here. I can also make a print screen. Now we'll write it down. So yeah. You can easily. So this is still single channel 2666. And we are reaching 56, 56, 281. This is the number you 56. should be looking at because it's a combination of the, the compression uh, result and the decompression result. So it's more like an average. Yeah, got it. Okay, uh, we also have uh, AIDA, it has a, a memory benchmark built in. Mm -hmm. And this is very good to show what is actually possible on uh, memory speeds. It has a read, a write and a copy speed. Usually the copy speed is the one I take for a measurement because that's what happens the most in RAM, speed, in RAM uh, memory. Mm -hmm. And the latency, so you will uh, also see uh, what kind of latency is experienced by uh, Windows. So that also depends on the timings you set for your memory. Yeah, yeah. So if you lower the, the cost latency, it will also show up that the latency in this, this program will be uh, lower, will so be lower. it will be faster. Yeah, it will be faster, yeah. Edward is saying, I'm not using XMP profile since it tends to overfold VCC SA and VCC IO voltages a lot. Uh, that's correct, yes. Uh, some boards or uh, most mo uh, uh, MSI model boards, uh, they have an auto voltage uh, uh, built in. And uh, also over voting the, or yeah, the, the uh, increase the voltage on the SA and on the IO uh, of the uh, the CPU. So that's to make sure that XMP really works and it is stable. Yeah, yeah. Also, when you do manually overclocking and uh, you will get uh, to the uh, to the limit, mm -hmm. then these kind of voltages you will also overclock or yeah. overvolt, I should say. And uh, but 
I don't know what kind of ranges you should uh, look into. Uh, if you're interested in these uh, kind of uh, voltages and, uh, and stuff, you, you should check with the experts on, uh, on memory overclocking. Uh, because uh, I have no clue what, what the best setting is for which speed. And which and that module. probably also depends on the situation and the module. Depends on the module, yeah. depends on the, the CPU you're using. Yeah. So it can be that if you know what you're doing, um, that manual overclocking can benefit because you can keep, yeah. in some situations, you can keep certain voltages lower than what XMP would do. Yeah. Uh, also, you can use the XMP and then just adjust those uh, SA and IO voltages. And but then, then you will get a little bit trial and error. To see what works. Yeah, and what exactly. Yeah. You, you come at a point that you lower it too much, and then it becomes unstable again. Yeah. So yes, you, you can save some. But if uh, you're enjoying it, it's it's nice to fill yeah. around with and see what you can achieve yeah. with it. Actually, there are also people who try to undervolt and underclock uh, CPUs, memories, and uh, whatnot, just yeah, to, to make, make it as power efficient as yeah, possible. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just get the, the performance per watt up. Yeah. You want to write down the number? Yeah. Okay. You also want to do the latency or? Yeah, let's just okay. Then it's twenty-two thousand two hundred and five. Twenty-two thousand two hundred and five. Two 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 oh megabytes per second. Yeah, fifty-seven point two nanoseconds. Fifty-seven point two nanoseconds. Okay, so I'll give you some more numbers. I didn't make a print screen anyway. Let's try Far Cry Five I because have them all noted down. What does it mean to uh, uh, to gaming? That's basically yeah, we already saw most of the numbers in, in, the, in the presentation with the charts, and uh, we showed most of the uh, numbers with the uh, 1080p mm -hmm. uh, with high settings, and that's where you see the most difference because the uh, the GPU won't be the bottleneck at that time, and the higher you go with the settings, uh, it depends more and more on the CPU and the memory. Uh, the lower yeah, you with, go with the, the lower the yeah. setting. Yeah, exactly. I'm using Far Cry 5 because it is, uh, has a built-in uh, benchmark. Also, it's very easy to, to change the resolution and the, the settings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a restriction here because our capture card can only do 1080p. Uh, it means uh, we need to uh, artificially uh, create like a 1440 So we can fake higher resolutions within yeah, this Yeah, exactly. Benchmark. There's a resolution scaling option in this uh, game. Uh, so we're using that. Uh, if we do uh, times two, it means uh, f uh, 1080p times two is the same resolution rendering as a UHD Ultra HD so HD it will still, resolution. It will render Ultra HD, but it will output 1080p. Exactly. So we have no so, problems with capturing. So the capture yeah. uh, card can uh, also uh, show it. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah. Edward says Coffee Lake is pretty good uh, integrated memory controller. So you can get uh, 3,200 DDR with almost stock SA and IO voltages. Yeah, that's it's also dependent on the situation a little bit, but um, if you can achieve that with your system, then definitely manual overclocking is the way to go because yeah. it won't put in voltages that should be safe with each setup. Yeah. So yeah, if your system can do that and um, you found out what the right settings are for your system, that's definitely the optimum setting, I would yeah. say. Yeah. But yeah, you need some fine tuning if you want to go to the yeah. right voltages and stuff like that. It just takes time mm -hmm. and patience. Yeah. And more knowledge than just applying XMP. Yeah, XMP is just uh, the easiest way. Yeah. Then you make sure it's always running. Yeah. So here we have the uh, 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 1080p setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the moment we've selected the high preset and the quality graphics. And it's currently at uh, graphics quality. 60 hertz because that's of the capture card limit as well. Yeah. You can not go higher than 1080p 60. Yeah. And here's uh, the resolution scale where we can uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, simulate a larger screen. So 2 would mean uh, 4K and uh, 1.3 is close to uh, 1440p resolution. So for example, if you have 2, then you have to multiply the resolution we're running, so 1080p. So 1920 yeah. times two becomes 3840. Yeah. And 1080 times two becomes 2160. Yeah. So you will get, when it's set to, to two, you will get exactly an ultra HD yeah. resolution. I will run it. And this is the 1080p high setting without scaling. So regular 1080p. Regular 1080p high setting, yeah. And I will show you uh, yeah, the, uh, the frames per second 
in the scene itself, so it's yeah, you have a nice overview. Yeah, it draws and a nice graph. Also, the benefit of this game is that it doesn't take forever to run the, the benchmark. GTA 5 is a little bit longer, and uh, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is very long. And it doesn't give you the FPS per scene. Of course, you see the, the FPS go way over 100. And this is the high setting, it looks okay, but later on you will see the, the, the ultra setting as well. And the is frame big zone, difference? Well, it, uh, I'm not sure. It, it looks a lot sharper to me, and uh, the, the, the FPS, the, the, the speed is not that much different. So if you have this kind of setup, I would always go with the So it's a big ultra. gain in quality, but not much of a performance hit? No, exactly. So. Uh, we get a, a 122 average, mm -hmm. uh, so just you can write, write this that down. down. So we're still on single channel yep. at 2666 megahertz, yep. and we're reaching... This is 1080p high setting. 1080p high, yep. Far Cry 5, yep. and we're reaching an average of... 122? Yeah, 122. Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> Let's go back to the settings then. And uh, uh, normally I would just increase this one to the 4K resolution, but uh, since we're not able, uh, I'll just bump up the graphics quality to ultra. And so I will already write down. So yeah. right now we're going to 1080p ultra settings. Uh, I, I would go directly to. Are we going to uh, Ultra HD now? Uh, Ultra HD. I think. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. Uh, um, yeah. Or we can do 1440p as a simulation. Yeah, I think quite many of our viewers are using 1440p, so I think it's interesting to okay, already okay. show the difference between 1080p, 1440p, and. Yeah. Okay. Let's Ultra do HD. that. So 1.3 so is close to 1440p. Yeah, uh, in between 1.3 and 1.4, so yeah. we don't have 1.33 in this uh, game, so we cannot do it exactly. So now we're trying to simulate what you would get with 1440p with this yeah. setup. Yeah, with a limitation of the capture card yeah. resolution. So basically you will see that uh, the frames per second are not that much lower, so uh, this kind of setup is very capable of running this game at the... Uh, well, we can see some drifts because now sometimes we're dipping below 100 FPS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we didn't see that in 1080p. No, no. But if you're buying an RTX 2080, you probably also have like a 1440p uh, screen. And uh, probably with also with higher uh, refresh rates. Or sometimes if people are using a 1080p screen, they tend to have very high refresh rates. Yeah, because also. 1080p yeah. at 240 hertz. So if you want to uh, get the most out of that, you will need to get frame rates that are close to 240. Yeah, um, and then it's as heavy as ultra high definition at 60 fps. Yeah, but it's mostly CPU load. So yeah, overclocking the CPU would help you a lot more than throwing in an even better GPU. Exactly. Okay, so this is the 1440p simulated test in ultra yeah so this is ultra settings yep and we're getting an average frame rate of 105 105 i can make a screenshot as well so we Just went from 1080p high 122 to um this was 1440p yeah ultra, ultra. yeah so it increased the resolution and increased the, yep. uh, the graphics quality. And we're still on single channel 2666. Yeah. Should get. Let's do the uh, the 4K uh, simulation as well, mm -hmm. and then you will see that the the frames uh, frame rate will drop a lot, and also more strain is on the GPU and much less on the CPU. So the memory speed won't give you that much difference. Yep. Some people are asking about the giveaway. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. If you cannot see the link there, I will again post it in chat. Please participate. If you like our YouTube or our Twitch page, you can already participate. If you like both of them, you'll also have double the chance to win. So we can already see 
a lot lower frame rate here. Yeah, the, the frame rate will yeah, average around uh, 60. In the beginning it goes up, then drops a little. And, then we'll and we also already saw in the previous benchmarks that did it, this is the harder part of the benchmark. Because you get the smoke yeah, yeah. in the house and yeah. they're the, more the, complicated yeah. calculations. The, the beginning and the end are more relaxed and sometimes you'll see the at the end the, the frame rate go up when mm -hmm. probably the, the camera zooms out. So the, the graph looks very similar each time, but yeah, with the, the heavy parts uh, here and the more relaxed parts in the end and in the beginning. So I'm going back to my list. Now yeah, we're well, 59 at is the Single Final channel score. to 60. This is a for Ultra HD uh, resolution simulated, but at ultra settings, right? Ultra settings, yeah. Ultra settings. And we are reaching an average frame rate of 59. 59. Okay, got it. It's not doing the. So from 1080p high, 122. 1440p ultra, 105. Ultra HD, ultra 59. Okay, let's do dual channel. Let's we'll see what the what is. If you are switching from single channel to dual channel, so you're physically moving your memory module, make sure to switch off your PC. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just advice. short disclaimer. Yeah. So we shut down the PC and now we're switching. Yeah. And officially, it's best to turn off the power supply completely, but have that any problems yet? So. Some boards they turn on when you swap uh, yeah, uh, memory modules or CPUs or VGA. Edward is saying my, my Far Cry 5 result at 1440p ultra settings, minimum 107, average 118, maximum 133. That's with an RDX 2080 with 3200 MHz DDR4. What CPU are you running, Edward? It's also interesting to know to see yeah. uh, in which ways you will differ from, from our results here. What was the result we got? Um, at 1440p Ultra, we were getting an average of 105. 105, yeah, okay. So at... That, that's with single channel memory, so, yeah. and lower, lower yeah. uh, clock speeds. Yeah, I forgot to say that Edward is running uh, dual channel as well. So dual channel at a higher frequency. Yeah. Also, this is a RTX uh, 2080 Ventus, mm -hmm. so there are higher clock modules. Yeah, so example, uh, models, if you would have yeah. a Gaming Edge Trio or even a Light, uh, yeah, Lightning is 2080 Ti, but um, yeah. if you will get Gaming Edge Trio or Duke, I think it's also clocked a little bit higher than Ventus. Yeah, Duke have also an OC version. Yeah. This is also an OC version, but it's not overclocked that much yeah. than the Dukes and the Trios. And same goes for 2080 Ti. If you have a lightning, for example, you will get higher performance do the same. than when you have a Ventus, for example. So it also has a bigger cooler and stuff. So back to Cinebench. Now we're running dual channel, dual but channel. still the same frequency. Yeah, 2666. I will get yeah. back to my list. Dual channel, 2666. So in the previous benchmark uh, of Cinebench, we had 1971. That was yep. with single channel. And now we have 2007. So a slight increase, 2007. Mm -hmm. So we went up by th uh, 36. Same frequency, dual channel instead of single channel. Yeah. Well, which one is it? Is it yeah, Edward uh, is running an RTX 2080 Gaming X Trio. And uh, yeah. 8700K, uh, 4.7 gigahertz all cores. Yeah. So now we're back to 7-SIP. Oh, I have noticed one thing. We're not running at the right speed. <laughs> we're not running at the no, right speed? No, we're running at 2400 probably because the XMP LED is off. I just swapped the modules. I didn't change the BIOS settings. It took and that one automatically? Okay, maybe yeah, we should it went redo back to the default. test. <laughs> yeah, so. That's cheating. <laughs> yeah, yeah my, we have to my switch mistake, the frequency. My mistake. Uh, That's good. Let's correct that.
normally it it gives you an op option uh, that mm -hmm. it, uh, 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 that it changed the configuration because we went from well uh, two dims in one channel to go into the BIOS and change your settings. Yeah. yeah. So usually it gives you an option, but because of the capture card, it doesn't display that part. Mm -hmm. Now we're back in the BIOS. Yeah, there we go. It has reset completely, as you can see. It's back to easy yeah. mode. And uh, normally we go to this one, and uh, we go to the memory settings. Where are we? It's quite interesting. You can already see the power of d dual channel over single channel oh. because we were actually running a lower frequency than we were previously, but we were getting a higher score in Cinebench. Yeah, actually, yes, yes. This, these module, uh, the SPD information or mm -hmm. the, the, the plug and play uh, version, uh, as Niels called it. Yeah, uh, it's so set to putting it in and doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. 2400 uh, frequency. Uh, I'm using the XMP uh, module of the Profile 1 with the 2666. So yes. that's the same profile that we used before, yeah. but oh. now in dual channel. Dual channel, yes. Let's save it and exit. So the, the speed in the Cinebench should be higher and also the, the, the 7 zip sh score should be a little bit higher because we went from 2400 to 2666. Yeah. And of course it should be uh, a lot more or uh, quite an increase for, from uh, the single channel to the dual channel memory. Yeah. So booting again. Here's Windows, so we start with Cinebench, right? Mm -hmm. I'll already take my notes here again. Yeah, okay. Luckily, this benchmark doesn't take a whole lot of time on a 9900K. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Yeah. If you do it on an older CPU, then sometimes it takes especially if you hours. only have like a dual core or something that will yeah. take a lot longer exactly 1982 so it's slower than before that's interesting yeah well it's so not it's slower than the the single channel but it's slower than the 24 I yeah uh, so it seems to benefit a lot more from dual channel than from the higher frequency uh, in this yeah. situation but Normally we run this benchmark five times because uh, it does fluctuate a lot. So yeah. uh, also some uh, background uh, processes from Windows might interfere also with the they affect the, the score that you get. Yeah. yeah. So usually if we do five runs, then the average. And then you is, take the average of the yeah, five runs. That's quite uh, quite good. So now we have at uh, the same. Yeah. same so now it's slightly yeah. higher. This is the same score as we had with uh, yeah. 2400. So we have 2007 in Cinebench. Yep. In 7-zip, you should see a, a bigger increase than with, uh, with the Cinebench one. Because it benefits more from higher frequencies than Cinebench does. Yeah. Yep. I also ran um, a handbrake as a, as a video uh, conversion tool. Mm -hmm. And then the, the X265 uh, uh, codec and it didn't gain much it was always within one percent so very close to the yeah to the error margin you have yeah. so it doesn't yeah it's all cpu and not that much uh, uh, memory speed will uh, give you any uh, improvements so we have uh, seven zip it's fifty thousand eight hundred and twelve so we're at dual channel 26 66 and the score is 50,812. So here yeah. we went down a little bit. Really? Yeah. We were at 56,000. That's amazing. Thousand. X and P's on. Memory in the right slots. Mm. That's weird. Let's run it again to see if we... Yeah, we can restart. Uh, Maybe we should check the background uh, processes. Yeah. It looks like this one is quite low. We're at 52 now. So we're getting a little bit higher. But still. Yeah, let's see if there are any processes going on. The GUI is, yeah, that, that's running all the 
CPU parts. I don't know. Yeah, it's also correct what Edward says. Also not very good to run benchmark right after Windows starts up. That yeah, that's true, make that's a difference. true. Yeah, but I wanted to because speed up the process. Because sometimes Windows is still yeah. booting up programs. And yeah, that's true. But unfortunately during the stream we don't have time to make it sit and start everything up for a couple of minutes. What we see is that it starts at 30 and then it will drop pretty much to 22,000. Not sure if I remember correctly, but this score in my mind that was one higher. Yeah. higher. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, this one is close to the the one before, right? Or yes, yeah, still slightly below. It's fifty one. Yeah, we were at fifty six. Yeah. Okay, that's single channel and dual channel. You have fifty eighty one, eight one two. This one's uh. 1,000 higher. Yeah, and in the previous one, I think we had 52 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll try the next benchmark. Let's see if the AIDA uh, gives numbers that are. <laughs> if this one is also close to the, the other one, then something is definitely wrong. Then we should see if we didn't make an accidental change in yeah. the IELTS. For CPU well, or something. Here you see the, the memory speed is DDR4 2687. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, that's because the the, uh, the base clock is at 100.8 megahertz. Yeah. So, so it's a small difference with. The yeah, if you would run it at 100.0, it would be uh, 26. And if you would 66. switch off XMP, it will also be slightly lower, I think. I think it's 100.5. Uh, yeah, correct. On this port, it will yeah. default back to 100. Serenity Shots is asking something about its um, Lightning Z card. Uh, if raising the memory voltage a bit on my Lightning Z, I'm able to put the memory clocks all the way up in Afterburner plus 1500 MHz. Is that normal or should I consider myself lucky? Well, yeah, if you can put it all the way up, then yeah, it's good luck. Yeah, a good sample. Yeah. <laughs> This is also low, definitely low. Something's wrong. CPU temperatures are okay. Did I make a mistake in the bias settings? Who knows? You can check. Like the timing should be normal. It's a 16, 18, 18, 36, uh, yeah, cloud eight. two. That's normal. But it's still running single channel. Huh? Does it only see mo one module now? That it's would explain why it will yeah. be lower. That would explain why it's close to the other one. Okay. Yeah, oh, we only have the ah, ah, I didn't put it in. Well, it's in, right? That's weird. Let's try Let's that again. Let's fix that. Yes. Okay, okay. So that explains why we score a little bit lower. Than yeah, yeah. When troubleshooting old systems, uh, sometimes the context between the, the DIM slot and the, the modules, they yeah also have some uh, corrosion there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it also helps if you just Unplug them and clean and them. A bit. Yeah, clean them uh, because uh, computers g uh, gather dust a lot. So yeah. uh, sometimes, uh, if you use modules a lot and you plug them in and out all the time, like we do in uh, our test setups, uh, we use a like a pencil eraser mm -hmm. and just uh, clean the contacts of the dims. That would also help. Uh. Okay, let's double check in the bias if we have. Uh, Two modules present. Yeah, if it has uh, 16 gigs of memory with the right speed, then. We're waiting for the bias screen to pop up. Yeah, the capture card is still thinking that it's shutting down, but that's the last yeah, picture it's saved Because it gets probably. stuck after you shut down the PC. Yeah. No bias, no? 
should be there now. By the coast postcode reader, it should be displaying. Nope. The capture card seems to be stuck. Can we do something to change I that? Hope so. Or can I unplug <laughs> it and plug it in? Again? Yeah, we can try. Okay. Hope that works. To quick re restart again. Because it seems like the system is behaving normally, but the capture card is stuck at the shutdown yeah, screen. The, the postcode shows A, B normally, then you're in. Yeah, the capture card is sometimes struggling a bit when switching through resolutions. So yeah, okay. No bias. Then we're stuck. What we can try is plug it out, boot it up and change it on the screen. And then see if we can get back into it in Windows. Yeah, okay, we, we can do we that. We can try yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, let's reset and we should come up here. Capturing the BIOS is always a little bit complicated. <laughs> so we have the default 2400 at the moment, so it's back to defaults again, mm -hmm. probably because we uh, we plugged it in correctly this time because it shows 16 yeah, no, it shows now. Everything. So I have to s reset the, uh, the XMP profile to 1 and then the frequency to 2666 because that's the speed we use for single channel. Save and exit. Yep. And then I'll just wait until it's booted up and see if we can... Yeah, yeah. When, once it's in Windows, we plug in the capture card again. Let's hope that works. Okay, Windows is loading on the screen. Yeah, that screen is not the problem. <laughs> it's no, the no, card. it's the, yeah. And here comes Windows, the login okay. screen. Now we're okay, at the so desktop. we're back in Windows. Mm -hmm. So, fingers okay. crossed. X and P lad on. Hey! And it's we're switching. back. That worked. Oh, this one is coming back too. Woo! <laughs> That's a good one. Let's do the scene back. Life hacks. <laughs> Actually, we should wait a little bit before. Yeah. So Windows can settle, but okay. So maybe we should check. Do we see all the memory now? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So now it's okay. Uh, now it's probably gigabytes. sixteen gigabyte, yeah. gigabytes, and now we should. Yeah. That can only be double channel because uh, of how we put it in the model. Uh, true. We can also double check with this one if you want. And we later on we'll see it in uh, Aida as well. Uh, dual channel. So yeah. here it goes, and it's uh, and the right uh, speed. Yeah. Right uh, multiplier. So let's go back to Cinebench and run it. We should at least get 2000 because we already yeah. got 2000 in the last run. We should get even a little bit over 2000 probably. Yeah, probably close to 220 I would guess. But normally if you start guessing, then yeah. Oh, slow, 1999, still slow, why? Yeah. Let's do that again, just for to get the margin of error out. Yeah, normally it will be a little bit higher, but it's a fluctuating benchmark. Also, yeah, good run, bad run. Yeah. So now it's a bit higher. So twenty thirty-seven. Yeah, that's actually better than I've seen on this uh, setup with okay. the 2666. So we have 2037. Yeah. So we had on single channel 1971, now 2037. Yeah, so now I'll, let's see I what would say 2020 would be like a, a, an average score. But 7-SIP will probably benefit more from it than Cinebench, right? Definitely, yeah. 
at least in my earlier testing, so no guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> I am Mr. P is asking, I have a question. Assassin's Creed Auto Studio game into a GTX 1070 Ti Ultra settings 1080p. Temperature uh, above 80 degrees. Is this uh, GPU temperature still normal? Uh, I would say so, yeah. Depends on, on the system, on the case, of course. If you yeah. have uh, a, a case built for silence, then the, you would allow the GPU temperature uh, uh, to uh, yeah, to raise a little bit. That's no problem. Uh, 80 degrees is still very safe. Uh, anything uh, below 84 degrees is uh, considered very normal uh, for an NVIDIA GPU. Uh, once it goes over 84 degrees uh, centigrade, then it uh, will uh, start lowering its boost clock. So. Uh, try to uh, keep it under that and then it's uh, all Should fine. Should be fine then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we have a score of 66, 490. Okay, there we made a big jump. We Sorry. were at uh, 56,000 and now we're at 66,000. Now it's 66, yeah. So 66, 66 490. 490. So that's more than 10,000 higher than in the previous one. Yeah, so that's close to 20%. So that's uh, yeah, that's a bit that's pretty good. And this is still same frequency, but dual channel instead of single channel. Yeah. Yeah. So thank God this benchmark promises and does exactly what we expected it to do. This one also, this one you know, is basically showing you the, the raw uh, DRAM frequency and speed. I'll put it in, we're now Dual channel 2666, yeah. ID64. Now it also says dual channel. Thank God for that. Uh, timings are still the same. So in the previous one, we had 22,205 megabytes per second. On the copy, yeah. Uh, on the copy, and then we had a latency of 57.2 nanoseconds. Yeah, the latency wouldn't differ that much, I think, but the, the copy speed No, because we're still running the same, same settings. Same so timings, that should be yeah makes a little difference so. okay so now we're at 35,584 so that's megabytes. a big increase we've come from yeah. 22,000 and we're yeah. going to 35,000 35,584 yeah correct and the latency is 55.6 yeah. so that's slightly lower than in the previous one the latency and the copy is much higher than yep. the previous one. Also the read and the write speeds, but the copy basically is a combination of read and yeah. write. So And just yeah. to make sure, a lower latency is better than a higher latency. Yep. So if you have a lower number there, it means it's faster than with a higher number. So that can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Because in most benchmarks, the higher number, the better it performs. With latency, it's exactly the other way around. Yeah. Latency is just another word for delay. Yeah, <coughs> let's go to the uh, game, to the Far Cry 5. Yeah, latency is not a score, it's a delay indeed. Yeah, no. how much time it takes. Yeah. Far Cry 5 starting. Always takes a bit. Do we still have any question? Uh, Edward 21 saying I have slightly below average memory overclock capability. Only plus 700 in afterburner. Best I saw was around plus 1000. Yeah, that really depends from car to car. Yeah, that's a silicon lottery basically. Yeah. yeah. Edward is asking, could you please paste GPU Z screenshots here? GPU Z screenshots of the Ventus. In what situation exactly, Edward? Or well, maybe it just wants to compare the the, the speed of this Ventus with the, the car. Oh, with this uh, game next trial. He has yeah, the trial, right? Yeah. yeah. Trio trio. Yeah. Okay, logging in. So we had uh, 1080p high, 1440p simulated ultra. Ultra. And Ultra HD simulated Ultra. Yeah. And then we can compare it to the single channel performance. Yeah. It's probably not, uh, still at uh, 4K simulation. I was saying Game X Trio does not have memory voltage sliders. That might depend on uh, the 
Afterburner version, maybe. Could no, be. I think it, uh, you have to unlock it, but you should be able to, to set a percentage. So you cannot really set up the voltage anymore, but usually there's like a percentage there. Not sure so the you should be able to overvolt it a little bit through Afterburner. I think it should be there. Yeah, I'm not 100% uh, sure though. Uh, this is the 1080p high setting. And what score did we have before? We had a 1080p high, um, 100, an average frame rate of 122. Okay. So it starts high, but we, we know that about this benchmark, so mm -hmm. it will go down a little bit. Yeah, so here it's quite far beyond 100 FPS, even at the yeah. mm -hmm. heaviest segment of the benchmark. The last part is also a bit easier, so it will r raise the average FPS a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it will go close to... So this is a proper increase. Yeah. And that's most likely because we're using a lower resolution, we're not using ultra settings, and yep. that gives you a lot more of a boost than at higher resolutions and higher settings. Yep. So uh, we went up from 122 average to 142. Yeah. So only dual channel gives yep. you 20, F 20 frames per second on average for free. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. You got it? Yep, yep. Got it. okay. Okay, then let's go to Ultra and then uh, do the 1440p simulation. I think that's the setting that a lot of people will use. So or maybe we're going 1440p and this is Ultra, right? Yep, Ultra. So Still in the FPS previous one, good. we had an average of 105 frames per second for this one. Edward was already waiting for the 1440p results. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> so I'm guessing Edward has a 1440p screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was the one with 118. Yeah, yeah, FPS, with right? the, yeah. Yeah, uh, of course this with is a 2666, 8, yeah. so uh, this will come in uh, maybe a little bit lower, but the CPU is a little faster. You know. Yeah, but he overclocked his CPU quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, he went up to 4.7, right? Yeah, on all cores. Uh, it can still be very close. And his memory was at uh, 3,200. Yeah. So it went up to 112. Kay. So the higher the resolution, the higher the setting, yeah, uh, so the, the improvement gets smaller. a little bit smaller. Because yeah. with 1080p high, we had an increase of 20 frames per second. And with 1440p ultra, we get an increase from 7 frames per second. Yeah. So you can already see a little bit smaller increase. Yeah. And it should disappear completely when you do uh, the 4K simulation. Also, ultra settings. Yeah. So in the previous one, let me look that up. We had on um, ultra HD ultra. An average frame rate of 59. I think that will be... And now we will probably get approximately that. 59, so it 60. Might, yeah. yeah. What we've seen before with testing it might 59, change. 60 is, is basically yeah. where the will reach. One or two frames per second higher might be, but not much more. No, no. So how many time if, uh, times have you seen this benchmark already? <laughs> Usually, I do you already dream it do other night? stuff. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the same with the 3D mark and, and stuff. You will see them so many times. <laughs> you make a selection of what kind of games are used in reviews a lot. Yeah. And then we, we just try to find a way which is easy to benchmark, which is reproducible. Because um, 
if games don't have a built-in benchmark, then it's very hard to play the same scene every time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I know I was uh, investigating memory speed. Now we have 60. Yeah, uh, so that's average. almost identical. Yeah. So 1080p high, 20 FPS gain by going from uh, single channel to dual channel. Yeah. With 4040p ultra, 7 FPS, and with ultra HD, ultra only one FPS. Gain. Yeah. So we can do the 33, 33, yeah. or we can do one faster if we want to show a little bit overclocking. Yeah, let's go all the way. Yeah. And then we can also, because that's out of the XMP spec, we can also show a little bit of uh, manual overclocking. Yeah. I don't know if we need, uh, we're we going to try the capture card again. Yeah, we, uh, now we know the workaround. So if it doesn't work, yeah, okay, we'll just... Yeah, let's, yeah. <laughs> so in the meanwhile, I will draw another winner because we are running a nice giveaway. Uh, if you haven't participated yet, please do so. Go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, if you cannot see the link there, I will also post it in the chat. And there we go. The next winner is... Uh, ZJD, congratulations, you won a 20 US dollar Steam code. We will email it to you probably tomorrow. And let's go back to the chat. If you have any questions in between, please drop them in chat. We'll try to answer as many as possible. Or maybe if you're comparing your results to ours, like what we're doing, also please drop them. It's always interesting to see what the uh, how they relate to each other. Yeah. Oh, we should do the GPU Z uh, screenshot uh, for him. Oh, yeah, we can also do that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've got a bias. Thank God, that's good. I have to look on another monitor, so if you see me squint like this, <laughs> it just means I cannot read it properly. How are your eyes? Uh, pretty good, <laughs> but I'm wearing contact lenses and they so should cheating. be replaced. <laughs> they should be replaced already. So. Okay. Or close to replacement we should go to auto so now we're still line. in dual channel but now we're going oh basically we, what we can do is just uh, uh run one speed higher um i will show you where you can look for things so this is 34 66 so there's one speed grade higher or uh, two if you will but yeah. normally we will go with uh, 133 steps so it's 33 33 memory and now we're slightly overclocking it to 3466. Yeah. In order to make that work uh, you will just raise the DRAM voltage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, usually that's also done by the uh, by the XMP so in this case we're not changing it that much. Type yeah. it right? Yeah. Because 1.35 that's the yeah. default voltage for uh, this memory kit. Uh, in this case, because we're using XMP, we don't need to change the timings, but here you can change all the timings you want. Uh, as you can see, it's already at command rate 2, so if it doesn't boot, you cannot switch to a slower command rate, but yeah. because you only have 1 uh, and 2 as an option. So um, uh, basically, if your module supports 1T uh, mm -hmm. command rate, then uh, you can also switch it back to 2T, two uh, two and then it's... Uh, uh, usually more stable it uh, gives you a chance to easier get for higher, your system to reach that yeah, yeah. higher uh, clock uh, speeds as well um, the cast latency is the most important latency of those bunch uh, this will um, uh, this is the one you will notice the most in benchmarks like 7 zip or whatever or even in the uh, aida memory bench mm -hmm. and all the other ones are um, are getting less important and um, there's even a whole bunch of uh, timing. Sub timings. I have no yeah. clue what they do or how to set them. So, so this is. Please don't ask me. The extremely <laughs> advanced stuff. Like if you want yeah. to set world records, that might make the Those difference. Those menus are for the guys yeah. who are into world records. Yeah, and they know more about memory tuning than than me and uh, most people. Yeah. So uh, uh, basically, you just need to play around with uh, uh, the XMP uh, button. Uh, that's the easy way. You can just ha hand select the, the or the manual way if you like it. You yeah. can put you it can in yourself. We also have an option to uh, do the memory triad. So there are some options here um, for this module. And uh, with memory triad, it will automatically select the settings that your yeah. memory can achieve. Uh, th this gives you a good chance for overclocking. I've tried this one 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, as the one I thought it should work, um, but unfortunately it didn't. So we're going with the uh, manual XMP1, uh, profile one timings. Okay. And the manual voltage uh, setting, uh, just to make sure it will boot. Let's hope it boots. So fingers crossed. Edward says lower TRFC can also make some difference in benchmark. Okay, okay, good. Uh, also depends on which benchmark probably. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think the AIDA shows the most because that's the, the true memory speed uh, benchmarking yeah. tool. Um, the other ones are basically also uh, tasking the, the CPU cores or a lot. With games, of course, the graphics card. Yeah. So now let's see if we're, oh, we're not, not stuck after going no, to No, no, the capture card's doing Capture card's well doing now. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, capture card. Uh, thank you for working. <laughs> yes. Well, we can uh, show the, the settings just to make sure that it's running as we want. So it's uh, at 1733 or a little bit above that. At yeah. least the uh, multiplier is at 1733. So and that times two is the effective clock speed of the memory. Yeah, exactly. And uh, these timings are exactly the ones that are in the XMP1 profile. So mm -hmm. that, that's uh, very good. Um, that's at least as expected. So that's uh, that's what we wanted to see. And then we should get some gains here. Um, not saying that Cinebench will show the most gains because it's mostly the, the CPU core. So it will benefit a lot more if you overclock the CPU than uh, uh, increase the memory speed. Or so lower the memory latency. Make a new list for this. So now we're at dual channel, thirty-four sixty-six. So yeah, the first um, run is also a bad one in this case, nineteen. Yeah, we've seen that before. If we just booted the system, yeah, the score tends to be a little Maybe bit lower. Maybe we should indeed. be less impatient, but yeah. Edward warned us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he did. He's he did. correct. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to do Cinebench correctly, then you should uh, run a couple of times anyway. Yeah. And leave it Windows for a while. Yeah, don't run it right away after booting. Yeah. So now it's a little bit faster than the, the previous one. The previous one was at 2037, so we only get two points. Yeah, yeah. so now we're at 2039. So in Cinebench, it's not a huge difference when going to no, higher no. frequency. No, we went with, um, I think in the past, with 9700X. At that time, it was the highest end uh, CPU with a mm -hmm. 10 core. And uh, we, we got at a number i'm not sure what the number was exactly but it was maybe 2499 and we couldn't get 2500 or something you know and then we tried to fiddle with the memory timings and then finally that we worked. got it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but and also in just Cinebench, you need a little bit of a lucky run at a certain point yeah also, because yeah. even with the same settings you can see slight differences yeah benchmark to benchmark also there's different versions of Cinebench which is uh, just a build number, which is different, mm -hmm. which shows more uh, variance between the runs and some uh, have more consistent results. Okay. This is the latest one, at least. So this one shows a very good benefit because now it's at 72,974. Uh, if I can remember correctly, it's 66,000 in the previous yeah. one. Yeah, so for reference, in single channel 2666, you are at uh, 56,000. Then from dual channel with that speed, 66,000. And now dual channel with a higher clock speed, it is 72,000, almost 73,000. Yeah. Even. yeah. But that, that's a good, yeah, that's close to a 10% increase. That's yeah. uh, that's pretty good. Just so what we can see is that 7-zip has a lot more benefit from higher uh, memory clock speed and yeah. single dual channel than Cinebench. Uh, definitely, yes, yes. The only one that's showing the same or even uh, more increase is uh, the AIDA memory benchmark because it's only tasking the memory. So in the AIDA, let me see, in the single channel 2666 was 22,000 uh, megabytes, megabytes per second copy and 57.2 uh, nanosecond latency. Then with dual channel, we got 35,584 megabytes per second copy and 55.6 nanoseconds uh, latency and now we're at yeah copying results coming up it's at 45 instead of 35 that so that's so also 
A big increase. Yeah, big jump there. Yeah, so that's uh, almost 33 or around 30 yeah. percent increase. Late she is also going down, so that's a good, good sign for this. 46 so a higher point. clock speed with the same memory timings will also cause your latency to go down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If you're because hiring your clock speed and increasing your uh, timings a little bit, you will get a higher latency again. Uh, or similar latency or because similar. Yeah, yeah, if the uh, clock speed and yeah. the, the, uh, the timing settings. Yeah, they're related yeah. to each other. The, the latency settings in the bias, if, if it says 16, for example, cast latency, it means it's a 16 uh, memory clock. Yeah. So if your clock speed at 20, uh, 2666, yeah. the, the, timing, uh, the, the time it takes for one clock uh, is, is longer than if you're at 3466. So even with a higher timing, like 17 on 40, uh, on a higher speed, 66, then you will get the same latency. Yeah, yeah, close to the same latency. Yeah. So we're at 46 point 46 eight point eight, yes, yeah. and 45,562. 45, okay, got it. Okay. So that's a big increase. Let's see what gaming does. Let's do Far Cry 5. And we will start again with 1080p high settings. Yep. And still need to do the GPU Z yep. screenshot. Edward is saying nice jump. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. some tests. Only a yeah. very small one in Cinebench, but in uh, yeah. 7 sip and uh, yeah. AIDA 64, definitely a big jump. Uh, for this demo, of course, we we, uh, we tried different applications. I also tried Blender. Uh, There's also a popular tool uh, to show CPU performance and uh, doing the, the rendering on the CPU, not the GPU. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I didn't see much uh, increase at all. And uh, also, um, uh, I did uh, what else I did? Yeah, the handbrake one, Blender. There should be another. No, that, I think that's it. Yeah, but so it really differs per situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if it's helpful or not. It, definitely. The the games also. Yeah, some games uh, I've selected here and also saw in the charts. Those are the ones that benefit the most from the memory. But it will definitely not hurt your performance. No, definitely. So if your memory not. is faster, in some situations you will not get extra speed for it. In some situations you will. Yeah. But you will never get a lower speed when you're no. using faster memory. To, sh to show increased uh, uh, differences, then uh, is the best way is to test at a lower setting. So yeah. it might not be the setting you play at, but just to show uh, what what is possible. Okay. This is 1080p high setting, no scaling. So let me, for comparison, I will take the other scores. The Single channel 2666 megahertz was an average of 122. Dual okay. channel at the same speed was already 142. Okay. And now we're going dual channel at 3466, so a higher frequency. Yeah. So we should be above 142 frames per second on average. Yeah. And at on the moment, this resolution, yes, yeah. that should be possible. Running into the heaviest part again of the benchmark with the smoke in the house. Yep. And later on, the camera will go up. Yep. Increase the FPS. One hundred and fifty-one. So still nine, 9 frames different, yeah. so that's uh, still pretty good. So now, like the previous test, also dual channel, but just the higher frequency, and then you get 9 FPS more at 1080p high. Yeah. This should change if we go with a higher graphics quality and also with yeah. higher resolution simulated. And we shouldn't forget AdWords screenshot for ZPUZ. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, 
So what's the score we ha had on the? We had uh, this is 1440p ultra. Yeah, so the, the simulated one. Yep. On the single channel 2666, we had an average of 105 frames per second. Dual channel at that speed was 112, so that was a seven FPS increase. Yep. And now we're going dual channel at uh, 3466 megahertz. 1440p ultra. Okay, note it down. So let's see what it does. Yeah, I'll probably end up. But it's yeah, the ending really raises the FPS again. Oh. 112. 112. So now we're at the higher resolution and the it's even completely gone. Yeah. The, no increase. So yeah. no increase here. No. And that's because higher resolution, higher settings, yeah. you will not benefit anymore from faster memory. No. So now we have uh, Ultra HD left and that was 59 on single channel uh, 2666 it was 60 on dual channel 2666 so not any uh, difference that is with like outside of the error margin yeah so we expect, so we expect to get 60 yeah. yeah we expect to get approximately 60 again So to even out the variances, you should run everything at least three times. Yeah. Depends also on how much variance there is in between the runs. So a weighted average is the best. I don't have that much time. Ever says uh, still slightly below my score, but yeah, it's uh, 2080 is overclocked and he's using the game X trial version. Yeah. Uh, and overclocked CPU as well. Yeah. Um, ST61 is saying I have an MSI Z270 Tomahawk motherboard and G scale RAM, but on XMP games are unstable and just quit to desktop randomly, sometimes after several hours. How can I change default XMP settings in MSI UAV PS? Um, I think the first thing to try if you're getting uh, unstable results on XMP is to flash the BIOS, I would say, because that can sometimes yeah, make a difference in, in yeah. stability. They, they, they continue to add new uh, memory profiles to it, so yeah, yeah. So that that could already solve the problem, and I think the best other method is by manually making a small adjustment. Yeah, For just using the XMP as a baseline, and then yeah. start increasing the voltage. That that's what I would do first, yeah. or uh, I would go. Don't with bump it too far at once. No, just a small I would go with the command channel. rate first, especially yeah. if you're using more than two DIMMs. So if you're, uh, on this case, it's a dual-channel motherboard, and um, if you put four DIMMs in, then uh, you're loading the memory channels and the memory yeah. controller in the CPU much harder. Then the first thing you need to do is uh, lower the command rate to two T. So basically, slow slowing it down by setting it higher. Yeah, and so that could solve the problem. That, that that's step one, and then step two, I would raise the voltage. Oh. If that wouldn't be, yeah, we actually had exactly 60 FPS. 60 so FPS. That's basically what this setup can do. Yeah. And so no change. Bottleneck by the GPU. So if you're going from dual channel 2666 to dual channel 3466 megahertz, you will only see an increase in 1080p. Yeah. And we don't see any increase in 4040p or. No. Uh, Close Ultra to nothing. HD. And this yeah. is just one game, and we've done uh, five games, and they all look very similar. Uh, we picked those games because they were uh, CPU heavy, mm -hmm. and some are not heavy at all yeah. on the CPU. So if they're not CPU to... heavy, if it's more GPU bound, then you will yeah. not see big differences with higher memory speeds. No, no. So especially if you're over, uh, same as with overclocking the CPU, you won't see the noticeable yeah. difference anymore uh, because the GPU is doing all the work. Let's go to the GPU Z, uh, yeah. as promised. Okay, Edward. Ready for print screen? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it open for a while. Where did I put GPU Z? Have I downloaded it? 
Sneaky DR saying hi. Hi, Sneaky. Welcome to the stream. No GPUZ on it yet. Then we just download it. GPUZ. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, this that works. There you have it. So while Edward can take a screenshot of this. Yeah, he's probably looking at the GPU clock and the memory clocks and the boost clocks uh, because mm -hmm. his trio probably boosts a bit higher than this one. Uh, yeah. This is a Ventus one, so it's a lower skew than the trio, Gaming X trio. So in the meanwhile, if you just leave this open, I will draw our last winner for okay. the yep. giveaway. Let me see. Winner is. Uh, whoa, how do I pronounce that last name? Do you know? <laughs> First name Raven. I can Raven. do that. Corins. Uh, co co or Coranes. Coranes. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, but congratulations. She won a 20 US dollar Steam code. We will email it to you tomorrow. Same goes for the other winners. Everyone, thank you for participating. I'm not sure if. I hope Edward made a screenshot so we can. Switch it off again. Oh, Edward is saying, fun story on previous motherboard, C170 Gaming M7 was bugging BIOS when I said 1T uh, in motherboard overrides to 2T. If I said 1T, it overrides to 3T, so no 1T option at all. Really? I've never seen 3T in any biases yet. No, me neither. Oh, and he says, thanks, you guys. So I think Edward has a screenshot. So then we can finish off for today. Okay. Good. Thank you for joining. Yeah. And I nice uh, hope to see you again in a future live stream. Well, let's hope. Um, yeah. For everyone else, next week we have a very nice uh, stream as well, and we will talk about 1440p versus 1080p. So we will explain you why 1440p is the new 1080p. That's also the title of the stream. So we hope to see you again next week, same time, same place. It will be very interesting, and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.